Okay, so welcome back into the shop. Now, first off, I want to say thanks to Rob's from Lunkers TV. This sign is uh, for his wife's new store, and he reached out to me to build it, and I'm very thankful that he did that and gave me the opportunity to do it. Now, what we're going to be doing is building this sign out of riffs on white oak. So um, the first step we need to do is uh, obviously unload it. And when I, when I mill lumber, the first thing I always do is rough cut it to length using a skill saw. I'll cut off um, one end about three or four inches, make sure there's no cracks in it, and then measure down and cut to length that I needed. Fortunately here I can only get, I think these are 10 footers, and the sign was only eight feet. So uh, we had a little bit extra material, but that's okay. Um, I need to, I ended up using about six boards to make up the width I needed. And so rift saw and oak, that, that confuses some people. We have three different grain patterns that come out of a tree, flat song, quarter song, and riff song. Flat song, it's kind of that cathedral look that you get where you get points and kind of these arches. Uh, quarter song is going to have these big, like, kind of flaky looks to it. It's very arts and crafts, if you've seen that. Riff song is like a straight vertical grain. Uh, it's very modern, very clean. There's not a lot going on. It's, um, it's a very cool look. I, riff song white oak is one of my favorites. So what I'm doing here is I'm edge joining. I want to get a straight line on the edge of the board and then I'm going to rip it to a rough width. Basically as wide as I can get the board that I have. Because when you buy lumber, it comes in standard thicknesses, um, standard lengths, but never standard widths. It's all varying in width. So I'll go through and edge joint all the boards and then rip them. And then I'm going to move over to my Watkin four-sided molder uh, and actually s 4 sds so I'll measure the width, so that board was a little over four and a half inches, so I'm gonna finish it off at four and a half, so I'll set my molder at four and a half width. Um, everything is going to uh, about three quarters of an inch thick, so I'll set my thickness cut to three quarters of an inch, and then basically you just feed these boards through, and it processes all four sides of the material. It's very quick. This is a huge time saver, this machine. Um, it's more of an industrial machine that you would see in a big mill shop. You can make flooring, you can do a lot. Um, but for a one-man shop, it can cut your milling time in half, if not more. Uh, so, I love having this machine. And each board, I, and, you know, since I'm trying to get, yield the largest width out of each board, I'm going to make an adjustment to the machine on the width of cut for each particular board, uh, which adds a little bit of time. It's not that big of a deal. It's just a matter of cranking the dial. The one downside to this machine is it'll fill up your dustbin really quick, uh, creates a lot of shavings. Another thing I love about that machine is if, if you process the wood properly, it will leave really straight edges and I can go straight to a glue up um, after after it comes out of that machine. So I'm using dominoes here. I didn't show that process. They're like biscuits. Uh, there's no strength to these. They just level the joints. So it, you know, when you put together this many boards, you're not fighting to, with a hammer to get them all leveled out. The dominoes take care of that. Everything's flush and smooth. Uh, it's, it makes the glue up a lot easier. So I would highly recommend when you do glue ups with multiple boards, you use dominoes. I'm going to cap the end of the sign with you would call it a breadboard, but this isn't an official breadboard because um, they're attached not with a mortise and tenon, but with screws that can move. Uh, and I'm cutting the dado, which the sign will slide into on the table saw. Now you would ideally do this with a dado stack, which is an insert of, of cutters that cuts a really wide groove. I'm doing it uh, with like four passes on a single blade so that... You know, sometimes I get a little bit lazy and I don't like to switch out to my data stack because on the saw stop you got to change sensors and everything. Um, so in this instance, since I only had to run two, I just decided I'm just going to cut these off out with a single blade. And ba the basic idea for these is just to keep that sign flat. If you hung the sign on the wall without these, it would bow over the t over time and start to look kind of not kind of cheap and not in good shape. So these will help keep it nice and flat and looking, looking good. Uh, 
So for the letter carving, I went out to a good friend's shop, uh, James Salter Craftsman. He's got a big CNC, obviously, you could fit an 8-foot piece on, and he set up the program, ran this for me. It took about 20 minutes to cut this, uh, and I, it's basically just a JPEG copy of her logo uh, blown up and put on this piece of wood. So it, it's really cool. It fits her branding, uh, and it's always fun watching these machines work. It's impressive what they can do. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who scoff at CNCs, but I think there's... Uh, some cool applications for it, and in this case, I think this is uh, exactly what you'd want to use one for to make a really cool big sign like this. So, get back to the shop, unload this thing. I'm going to do a little bit of sanding uh, on the lettering because you've got that bottom you know track you can see where the where the uh, router tooling cut it's not super bad but it's enough that I want to sand it up a little bit I also want to center you know we don't cut the the sign to length until after you carve the letters that way we can center up uh, cut the ends and center everything up also I, I didn't want to just leave it uh, as is, I wanted to put a little bit of color in the lettering um, to just kind of darken them and make them pop a little bit. I originally kind of thought about painting, like spraying a black paint into the letters and then sanding the paint off. Um, but I thought that may be too much, too dark. I kind of like the idea of keeping that grain flowing through the letters, if that makes sense. So I just took some shellac and I tinted it uh, with a little bit of trans tint to darken it. And then we basically painted that, wiped that into the lettering, and um, then came back and did that, ran it through my wide belt and cleaned it off uh, with a few passes. And it, it worked really well. It looked cool, and it just allowed a little bit of pop in that lettering. Okay, this is my wide belt sander for those of you who don't know what that is. It is a 43, 43 inch wide sanding belt inside that machine. And no, it does not come with these uh, really cool fancy drawings that my daughter does. Uh, that is custom. You need to get a four year old to do that. So what we're gonna do is I've got probably an 80 grit in here. Um, that's probably what I'm running, 80 grit. Can't remember, it's been a while. Uh, and the first thing you wanna do with this machine is it's got a calibrator. It calibrates the thickness right here. Uh, so you slide the workpiece in there, you raise the table uh, to a certain point and it stops and that calibrates how thick it is. Uh, feeds through and it has a single head and a little sand. Um, I think we did this in two passes uh, to clear off all that finish and make a nice clean look. The, the downside to this machine is a single head so you got to change grits. So you can see those are the belts hanging kind of above our heads there. So I'll start with an 80, go to 120 and then go to 150 grit. Uh, and off of 150 grit, usually do a little bit of sanding with a, a palm sander or an, or an orbital sander to get the scratch marks out. Okay, so I don't know. I've been doing YouTube for almost four years. That's probably the most unorganized. This is probably the most unorganized video I've ever put together, and I apologize for that. This I built this thing a while ago. And uh, somewhere along the line, I lost some footage, so it just stops here. I don't have anything of it finished, unfortunately. Uh, you're not missing a lot. I shot a couple coats of lacquer on it. Uh, fortunately, Rob did come by about three days ago and picked it up, and he shot some footage. So I'm going to link that video in my description, and if you don't know who Rob is, you should head over and subscribe to his channel. It's Lunkers TV. Super entertaining. Uh, I watch it all the time. Very cool guy. I uh, appreciate him letting me build this sign, and he also did send me a text letting me know how much his wife loved it, so that's awesome. That makes me feel great. Um, Big thanks to you guys for tuning in. Uh, there is some footage after this of Rob, Matt, and I just kind of hanging out in the shop. Not super entertaining, but I wanted to include it so you guys could see it. Uh, what do we got coming up? Oh, we got a lot of Airstream stuff happening. Excited about that. Uh, really cool dining room table build. And, yeah, just a lot of cool stuff in the works. Um, appreciate you guys tuning in as always. Uh, appreciate the support you give me, and we'll see you next time. Okay, let me explain how this works. So you've got the cleat here. Oh, I wrote on there, and it's pretty self-explanatory, but in case you just totally don't get it, this goes to the wall. Just put a screw, find a stud, put a screw in the stud, get your level on it, level it, find your second stud. 
hang, screw this up, and then you just pick it up. Drill a hole it on in this. this first, right? Yeah, Back you're going to want to drill a hole and countersink it so the screw head is flush with the wood. Yeah, does that make sense? Flush with the wood. And dude, you can call me. I probably will call you. Ron, call me. Ron, <laughs> yeah, straight through Ron's here. Ron's like, wait a second. <laughs> if you want to do okay. that, you can. <laughs> She's gonna like this. Yeah. I'll tell you what, she's really gonna like this. It's cool, man. It'll be a nice touch. It's gonna be really nice. It's gonna be the legitimate the focal point when you walk in. It's the first thing you're gonna see. The big ass. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It'll be the first thing you see. Awesome, dude. Good okay. Well, I'm gonna wrap it up so I can jack it. Yeah, let's do it. I'm gonna grab my camera real quick. All right.